This is red light therapy, and I've been using it for the past month to see if it makes any difference to my riding, recovery, and strength work. Red light therapy has been rising in popularity in the health and fitness space with some impressive benefits according to research. In fact, one study showed that it cut post-exercise muscle damage by more than 50%. But is it as really effective as the hype and research suggests? How have I found it over the last four weeks, and should you be considering giving it a go? Let's get into it. Red light therapy or photobiomodulation has been increasing in popularity over the past number of years. It's been used in rehab settings for quite a good number of years now and has actually started to move into the skincare and cosmetics world. Not that that's of much interest to me, you can probably tell by looking at my complexion. But what is interesting is the reduction in price in these consumer based panels said to help with our recovery and our performance, whether that's on the bike, in the gym or wherever else we're exercising. Which is why I was super excited when Flickies got in touch to gift me this panel to give a try. And they're in no way sponsoring this video or have given me any money. All of my opinions are of course all science backed and my own. But before I take you through my experience trying red light therapy, let me quickly explain how it works and then the proposed science backed benefits. So it essentially works by exposing the skin to red light or near infrared light. And if you cast your mind back to high school physics, there are different wavelengths of light on a spectrum that essentially do different things to different cells in the body. Red light on the spectrum is apparently around about 600 to 700 nanometers. This will help to impact just the skin itself at a surface level. So this is commonly used in the sort of more cosmetic products, but then you also have 700 to 1000 nanometers of light as well. This is the near infrared light. This is the stuff you can't actually see. This helps to dig a little bit deeper, our muscles and even our joints too. And what essentially happens is these wavelengths of light penetrate the skin and are absorbed by our mitochondria those powerhouses in our cells. And this stimulates the mitochondria to produce more ATP or essentially energy, which can help with things like healing, reducing soreness and improving general muscle recovery. Well, there are at least the proposed benefits, which sound brilliant, but what does the science actually say the actual benefits are in a real life context? And how does red light therapy compare to other recovery methods like cold plunging, which seems to be all the rage at the moment and things like foam rolling? And well, the research is actually really promising. I had a look at quite a number of studies for this. And let's quickly start with the first study that I mentioned at the start of the video. Using red light therapy helped to reduce muscle damage by over 50% post-exercise. That's an absolutely crazy stat. They essentially got participants to do bicep curls eccentrically, which is the kind of most damaging part of the movement. Whilst having red light shone onto their biceps, they found that those individuals who'd had that, as opposed to the group of individuals who hadn't, cut muscle damage by over 50% post session. So whilst of course that study has nothing to do with endurance sport, it just shows the power that red light or near infrared light can have on muscle damage. There's also been a meta-analysis of looking at using red light therapy before exercise and they found that it showed positive impacts on leg strength and also lower levels of soreness post-exercise too. There's other studies looking at things like better gains in quad strength using the light before exercise compared to not using anything. And whilst there's not loads of research on specific cycling or endurance performance because red light therapy is usually used in a rehab setting, I did manage to find a good couple of studies. And in one cycling specific study, they found that using red light therapy before a session, they found that the participants improved their performance in time to exhaustion tests. But there's also been quite a few studies as well that have found maybe no improvement whilst exercising but actually lots of improvement in the recovery post-exercise. One trouble with a lot of these studies though is the difference in types of light used, the protocols with the light, how long they've been shining it on, how close the light is away from the muscle group, and I'll go into exactly how I've been using my light to get the most benefit in a couple of minutes. But in general, the evidence does tend to show positive improvements in a lot of the metrics being used. But in future, I would of course like to see more research done on cycling specifically, endurance sport specifically, and the use of red light after a session as well. Lots of the research tended to show that performance and recovery improved using red light pre-session, but it'd be interesting to see if it helps with recovery using it post-session. But combining the evidence I found and with the general evidence out there, we can start to see that specifically for us cyclists, using red light might help with things like time to exhaustion, so things like endurance, but also things like muscle soreness and general recovery as well. But by far the biggest benefit of using red light therapy is just how easy it is and actually how nice it is to use, as opposed to things like foam rolling or self-massage, which is 
quite painful, or cold plunging, which is just a horrible experience for everyone involved, using red light therapy is actually quite pleasurable and just super simple and easy. You point it wherever you want to improve recovery, you feel the muscle getting a little bit warmer, and that's about it. But in combination with the science-backed benefits and just how easy red light therapy panels are to use is why I've been so excited to give red light therapy a go. For the past number of years now, I've just never pulled the trigger on buying one myself which is why I wanna say thank you to Flickies for gifting me this one to give a try. But there are so many different panels out there and of course they all come in different sizes. You can buy ones that emit different wavelengths and of course they all come at different costs. So this panel's a mid-range one at about 325 pounds, which is big enough to kind of cover certain areas of the body I was mainly using on my quads and also a calf injury as well. And it also emits the right wavelengths of light. Not only does it emit red light, which helps with the skin, but it emits that near infrared light, which you can't actually see when it's on, that helps to deeper work, sort of deeper get into those muscles and the joints even too. And the protocol I've been using is 10 minutes five days per week on the areas I want to focus on. So I've been using it for 10 minutes a day on my ankles. I've got an insertional Achilles tendinopathy, so that's been helping me reduce the inflammation there. And then also I've been using it after a gym session or after a ride during the week, five days a week, just shining it essentially at my quads. And then on a Sunday, I've been using it before a ride because a lot of the evidence has been suggesting using the light before a ride is gonna help improve recovery, but also performance during the session too. And the evidence shows that that protocol should be enough for what I'm looking to achieve. Of course, there are different protocols you can use as well. You could do it three times a week, but do it for a bit longer each time, or do it for a little bit longer if you're looking to cover larger areas of the body in one go. But what have my results been over the last month other than feeling my muscles warm up whilst I've been using it. And of course, all my evidence is anecdotal. It's just me. So take it for what you will. But my training works in blocks. So I'll have a four week block of training. Usually at the end of each block of training, I'll get quite tired. My performance in the gym and the bike will start to kind of wane before I then have a deload week. But actually I found that in the last block of training, my performance has decreased slightly less. And even at the end of the four week block in my kind of final week of quite intense training, I still felt quite fresh. Again, whether that's anecdotal or whether it was just me or maybe I was sleeping better or fueling better, who knows, but that's how I felt. My ankle actually does feel quite a lot better and a lot less inflamed. Again, I've been doing the rehab I should be doing for that anyway, so that might have happened without red light therapy, who knows? And the times in the week where I do two rides one day after another, I've actually felt that a little bit fresher on the second day's ride than I normally would do. But even though I've felt anecdotally that it's helped with my training, has it completely revolutionized my recovery? Well, no, of course not. And has my FTP suddenly skyrocketed to 400? Well, no, of course it hasn't either. And will it be replacing good quality sleep, good quality training, good quality nutrition? Well, no, of course not. But out of all of the passive recovery methods out there, some of which I mentioned today, foam rolling, self-massage, cold plunging, things like that, it's probably one of the easiest I've ever used. And if the science is anything to go by, potentially one of the most impressive and useful passive recovery methods out there. So would I recommend it to you? Well, I'll be continuing to use my red light panel, so take that for what you will. Cycling isn't cheap, but if you have a little bit of spare cash lying around, maybe your sleep's already good, maybe your nutrition's already good, maybe you've got a well thought out training program, well, this might be the passive recovery product for you. And if you'd like to give this panel a go, you can find the link in the description below and it's an affiliate link, so I'll get a little commission if you purchase as well. If you want to speed up your recovery even further, do follow along with my post-ride stretching routine here. Ride strong and I'll catch you in the next one.